Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. It's been a busy week and a half or so here. A lot of things going on, um, aside from stuff just, you know, with the property owners and my neighbors and just the normal things that go on. Um, I started on an antenna experiment uh, that I'm going to be doing, and it's probably actually going to be the next video now because uh, something else came up. You'll enjoy the antenna experiment, I think, by the way. You saw a little teaser there. Yeah, well, we'll get into it next week. But uh, I um, contacted SDR Play a little while ago and inquired about um, getting one of their current or their more recent units to experiment with trying to make it easier to get it going under Linux. Uh, some years ago, maybe three or three or four years ago, I had an S or four, four, four or five years ago. I had an SDR Play RSP2 that they sent me, and at the time um, I developed some scripts to get it set up and running under Linux. The software wasn't quite there back then. Uh, SDR Play releases an API, Application Programming Interface, for their hardware, um, but that's it. On the Windows side, they have SDR Uno, which is a full-on software suite for it, um, and it's recognized by most of the SDR programs. On the Linux side, uh, things were a bit more granular um, at the time. Uh, there was a, a new thing called SOPI SDR that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and uh, there was a module for GNU Radio and GQRX called uh, Osmo SDR that allowed it to talk to SOPI and get to the, F the uh, SDR hardware that way. It was, uh, it was sketchy, the support back then for that unit, and uh, you had to build a lot of software to get it going. Got it going, um, SDR Play had, uh, adopted some of my scripting and wrote their own and provided scripts that would allow a Linux user to run these five scripts and they would download the API, install it, download and build various bits of software, including um, all the pieces needed for Cubic SDR and Cubic SDR itself, and get it going under Cubic SDR. So that was then. Uh, things have moved on, and they have moved on, and they had this new unit that I, it's been out for a little over a year now, um, the RSP DX, which I'm not gonna be reviewing in this video because this is about getting it going under Linux, but it's a really nice piece of hardware. Um, <laughs> SDR Play. They have, have, in my opinion, some of the best SDR hardware on the market. Extremely sensitive, flexible with multiple antenna inputs. This one has three. Uh, various front end options and filters and preamps and uh, a bias T output uh, supply. So this can actually supply a five volt bias voltage over the cable to, to operate a remote preamp with. Uh, you know, so it's, it's fantastic hardware. And this one's in a metal case. Um, but, uh, they were still running the old scripts and the old stuff from Linux uh, that, I'd, that I'd helped with, you know, five years ago, four or five years ago. So they obliged. They sent me this unit to play around with on getting it going on Linux. Um, they did not pay me to, to say or do anything in this video. They just, you know, uh, sent me the unit to, to give it a go. And uh, that ended up occupying days of my time. <laughs> Have you ever started on a project but gone at it from the wrong angle and then you start to have some failures and some troubles and some roadblocks and you, you redouble your efforts and you work harder and you work harder and you end up spending a lot of time trying to solve a problem from the wrong direction that's what i did so we'll go to the computer and uh, we'll talk about how i resolved it but for those of you that are just here to get a hold of the script and get your SDR play uh, going. Uh, down in the video description, I've linked my blog right up on this, which includes the scripts in text form. They're really short. You can copy them, paste them into an editor, save that as a file on your, your Linux machine, make it executable and run it. Uh, and in a, in a quick and, and well, relatively quick and simple three-step process, it gets your uh, SDR play hardware going with Cubic SDR and GQRX. So if, if you're just here for the scripts, 
go down to the video description, go to the blog entry and download it. For the rest of you that want to hear the story of how I got this thing working, let's go to the computer and we'll talk about that. To understand a few things or fill you in a little bit, let's uh, take a look at the way software can talk to peripherals, roughly. In the early days, way back in the DOS days, Commodore 64, Apple II, uh, early Amiga, well, no, not Amiga days, but yeah, anyway, in the early days, software programs like WordPerfect here had to have support built in for your printer. They actually had to build drivers into their own application to support different printers from different manufacturers like Epson, Oki Data, or IBM, and many others. So if you had an oddball printer or a rare one and it was not supported by your software, you're pretty much out of luck uh, as far as special features like underlining boldface, stuff like that. You could send straight text, probably, to the printer. But the, the main point is the application itself had to understand how to talk to printers. Now, later on, as operating systems got more complex, uh, when Windows came out, Amiga DOS, and Amiga Workbench and, and Desktop, Mac OS, the uh, printer drivers moved into their own subsystem. And the idea here was you'd have this layer, right, where all of the printer drivers for the different printers would go. And the manufacturers of the printers would then write a driver. They'd write a driver for Windows or for Mac OS. And the user would install that printer driver. Now that translation to that printer is handled here. And then the printer subsystem would present to the applications a single unified interface. So a programmer could write their application to talk to this printer subsystem, and they would know that they had a good chance of being able to print on the user's hardware no matter what it might be because this subsystem would translate it for them. This is similar to what you think of as an application programming interface but not quite. But anyway, this model became the standard and it simplified life for the application developers and for the users greatly. As long as you had a printer driver installed for your printer, you knew that every program that could print would be able to print to your printer much better. Now, let's talk about SDRs and let's go back a few years uh, with Linux. And this is mostly from my memory, but it's, and it's not probably not 100% accurate, but it's close enough. So this was about four or five years ago when I first had, uh, took delivery of a uh, SDR play, I think it was an RSP2. And getting it to work under Linux was not that easy. So like those early days, applications at this point for SDR still pretty much had to support the hardware. GQRX would have modules that would allow it to talk to specific hardware. Um, software vendors of some hardware would provide an API, application programming interface, and this would make talking to the hardware easier. Basically it's a collection of libraries that allow for a very easy interfacing with their hardware through software. It gives you functions you can call in your program, get frequency, set frequency, and so on, things like that. So your, uh, your software doesn't have to know how to talk to the specific hardware chips and um, other devices that are in the, uh, in, in the machine or in the, in the SDR. But that API had its own unique interface on the other side that the software had to know how to talk to. So your applications would kind of have to know, okay, I, this is an RTL SDR, this is how I talk to it. Uh, this is a NOELEC, this is how I talk to it. This is a whatever, HackRF, you know, as they were coming out. It was still pretty much a new field, so it was pretty granular. Uh, a project was started called SOAPY SDR here in the middle, and this is an attempt to model um, something like this, this printer subsystem. So in SOAPY SDR, the idea is you build modules for SOAPY for your hardware, and then all the applications only have to know how to talk to SOAPY, and then they'll be able to talk to your hardware translated through SOAPY. And that's a great idea. It's a great model. And uh, as you'll see today, we're getting a lot closer to making that the standard. But a few years ago, when I first looked at the SDR play, it was still pretty up in the air. Um, 
the applications that were available at the time kind of had to know about specific hardware. Uh, they were just beginning to get support to talk to Soapy. And Soapy, likewise, was just beginning to gain support for various hardware. Some of them uh, were pretty iffy. Some of them worked pretty well. So it was all pretty up in the air. And the uh, GNU radio side of things in GQRX, there was this, and I think I've got this right. It's, it, 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 my mind's kind of frazzled from this week of playing around with this stuff, trying to get things working. But uh, GR Osmos driver, I think, was a middleware piece that allowed GNU radio to talk to Soapy and therefore talk to the hardware that it supported. It was all pretty granular at the time. And I remember getting that first SDR play to work. Um, I had to build a lot of stuff in the scripts. We had to build Qubit from scratch. So we'd have the newer version that had better support for uh, Soapy SDR. And I think there was a Soapy SDR module for that early version of the um, SDR play uh, that could talk to the uh, SDR play API. You know, so it was all pretty granular, pretty new, kind of shaky. And I got it working. Now, nowadays, things are much better. Uh, Soapy SDR is more established. More hardware is supported by it, and there's drivers for it for various things. Um, GQRX, New Radio, Cubic SDR all know how to talk to Soapy by default. You know, so things are really coming along. But with this new SDR Play DX, I was still thinking in this model... And I focused on this piece, um, the Osmos driver. And that's where it got messy. Uh, there was a new version of this that would talk to the uh, SDR Plays um, API, the new version of it that they released a year ago. So that's where I focused, and I started working on building this. And then I found out that in order to get that to work because of version numbers, I would have to rebuild GQS or uh, GQRX. And I would also have to build Cubic SDR maybe to get the newer version of it. And I was just going around and around and around and around and around trying to get all the versions built, to get them all to agree with each other. It was a mess. And then... I was, a, well, I was about to throw in the towel. I was about to give up after days of playing around with this when it occurred to me that since things have come along so far, maybe there's a Soapy SDR module for the new API, and maybe that's the direction I should look. And that fixed everything. Now, I should mention, while I was working on this, I did most of my development work in a virtual machine with a fresh install of Ubuntu 20.04. And uh, that way I could work on it and bang away at it without screwing up my main laptop. Uh, because my main laptop here is is my bread and butter. I need the this machine to be stable for my survival. So after a couple of days of banging my head against the wall, trying to get uh, all the software rebuilt to work with the SDR Play, I thought, you know, wait a minute. I went back and I looked, um, as I said, at uh, Soapy, and I found that Pothosware has created a Soapy SDR Play 3 plugin for Soapy, and it's a module. Uh, and this talks to the API that SDR Play provides version 3. Has some troubleshooting here. Um, and it has been, it's being, it's being worked on. Uh, six days ago is the latest uh, update here. A lot of things are several months old. I'm going to commit a few bugs, uh, which I'll show you here in a little bit, and see if he can get those fixed. But mostly it works. This is the only thing you have to build. The versions of Soapy and Cubic SDR and GQRX and, um, that are available in the repositories for... Uh, latest Debian based things like Ubuntu 20.04 and newer work just fine. They just need this piece to go into Soapy to allow it to talk to the hardware. So after successfully trying that on my virtual machine, I started developing the script. 
And this is the script. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Um, we run this single script on our on our our uh, Ubuntu or Mint or recent Debian-based machine, and the first thing it's going to do is install uh, dependencies that we're going to need, and that's a one line here: sudo apt install, and the various things we're going to need: git, so we can clone that soapy repository, um, or that soapy uh, GitHub page, CMake, build essential are uh, the pieces that we're going to need to compile the software. GQRX, Cubic SDR, the versions that are in the repositories are already new enough to talk to SOAPI just fine. Uh, Live SOAPI SDR dev, these are the development files that we will need when we're going to build that uh, plugin for SOAPI. And uh, a couple of other pieces um, that we're going to need. So we install those. Then we install the API that's provided by SDR Play. I copied this little clip out of their existing scripts, but it's really straightforward, the same steps I would have done anyway, so why type it all again when I can just do a copy-paste? I'm going to do exactly the same stuff. You know, so this uses wget to get uh, the API installer, changes it to executable here, and then runs it, and that installs their API. It'll prompt you to, to look at a license agreement and hit yes. Uh, and I think it'll prompt you for your um, user password. Once that's done, uh, the last piece, we get this SOAPI SDR play module and we build it. And so the steps here are pretty straightforward. Um, I changed to the user's downloads directory. I figure that's an area that they're going to clean themselves regularly anyway. Uh, we use git to clone the uh, SOAPI SDR Play 3 module. We change into that directory. We make a build directory. Change into that build directory. We use CMake to configure, uh, build the configuration scripts for our machine. We make the program and then SUDO make install to install it and that's it. Once this is done, we're pretty much there. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is a reboot. And I can't remember the exact reason why, but we do need to reboot at least once before it'll all work. So once you've done, once you're done running this one script, you know it might take it might take several minutes. Uh, it's going to install, you know, maybe as many as 120, 140 packages. But once it's done, your machine is all ready to go with GQRX, Cubic SDR, and everything should work. I've got my SDR Play plugged in right now. Let me hook up an antenna to it. And we'll go ahead and we'll launch it. So I'll go up here, GQRX, and I've opened up the uh, uh, IO devices, the hardware selection, and we can see that it detected the SDR play. And I've got that selected, so I'll hit OK. And we should just be able to hit go. And there it is. Uh, let's go down to HF. So there we go. It's working. No muss, no fuss. I will tell you that there are some bugs. It works, but there's a little bit of an odd behavior that I'm going to try to point out to the developer of the uh, Topothosware. Oh, there it just happened. Keep an eye on there. See it happen there? Uh, watch the spectrum here. And you'll see it there, did it again. See that sort of a pause and grow that it does occasionally? And that seems to correlate with the signal strength meter jumping. There, did it, there, did it again. So it's like there might be an occasional bit of packet loss. And you can kind of see this sort of a digital weirdness in the waterfall too occasionally. So I think that there's some slight issue with communication, but overall, it does work. I can come over here to input controls and I have some of the controls for the SDR play. Um, 
hardware AGC, individual IF and RF gains, notch, uh, and the antenna selection. Remember, we've got three antennas here, so I can I'll switch to my Slim Jim, and you can see we're not picking up WWV. And I'll switch back to the doublet, and there we go. So yeah, it does work. Um, works pretty well. I've copied some satellites with it, browsed around on the HF spectrum. No problem at all. And likewise, uh, Cubic SDR, which mine might still be a little broken because I did try compiling it a couple of times, but you can see it does find the SDR play, RSPDX. Uh, antenna, let's put it on antenna A. Sample rate, we're going to look at 2 megahertz of spectrum, and we'll hit start. And there we go. It's working. Yep, okay, I did bork the audio on it. <laughs> I need to uh, completely remove the broken version of Cubic SDR that I, that I screwed up while I was playing around with this thing trying to get it working. Yeah, yeah, I'm not getting audio. Okay, I broke it, but that's my fault. Uh, on my virtual machine, it works just fine. And on a, a fresh install or um, a, a new install on, on your Linux box, it should work fine. It does see the hardware. So, you know, there you go. One simple script. Now, I have linked this, uh, my blog entry uh, down in the video description where you can go and you can copy and paste this into an editor, save it to your system. Uh, I've sent it on to the SDR Play guys. I'm sure that they will probably redo what they put up on their site to make it easier for Linux users to get going. Uh, because, yeah, one script and you're done. It does everything for you, and it's not as much to do as we had three years ago. So there you go. Um, that makes it fairly easy. One script, download it and run it. Reboot your computer, plug in your SDR Play, and GQRX and Cubic SDR will see it just fine. And it doesn't mess with things where if you have another um, SDR already set up to work with those packages, it still will. I can still use my AirSpy with both of them just fine. This doesn't get in the way of that. Whereas rebuilding other layers of the software might have. So I, I think it's a pretty good solution for now. And uh, I'll keep an eye on that Git for the uh, SOAPY module. I'm sure it's uh, still in development. I'm going to be reporting a couple of those bugs that I showed you and uh, hopefully he'll get those fixed. If um, you've gone through and you've used the script to get your SDR play hardware going, uh, keep an eye on that repository, um, or that Git, that GitHub entry. Look at the change logs file. Uh, it will show you what he's been doing and the dates that it's, that it's been done, so you'll see if there's a major change or a major bug fix. And if you want to update just that piece, just that SOAPY SDR module, you can actually cut that piece of the script out uh, where the comment says um, we get and build the SOAPY module. You can just cut that piece of the script out and just use those commands to update the module on your machine uh, down the road. So there you go. Get your SDR Play hardware working under Linux fairly easily. I hope you found that useful, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.